Today's video is going to be the next video in a couple of, in the series of a few videos I've been doing about upgrading my video quality. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a new tripod that I've bought. In a previous video, I'd looked at my new video recorder, which is a Blackmagic Design Video Assist 12G. And now with that mounted on top of my camera, it makes the whole camera rig really heavy. And my old tripod, which is a Velbon EF61, just can't hold it. It's a relatively cheap tripod. I think I paid about £50 for it in Argos years ago. And it's more designed for photography anyway, but it's got a two kilogram weight limit. And with the this whole rig with the video assist and everything on it, it's just far too heavy and it's not very stable. In fact, obviously I'm currently using it to film this video and the whole thing is like quite rattly and creaky and I'm terrified the camera's gonna fall off. And with probably about three grand worth of equipment hanging on top of this tripod, if that falls off, that would be a bit of a disaster. So I decided to upgrade it. So obviously bear in mind, if you're watching this, if you're finding this through a YouTube search, I'm not a video production professional professional, I'm not a videographer, I don't do this day in day out. So with this I'll be giving my opinion as a general consumer who happens to do a lot of video work and what I think of it. Which could be quite useful because a lot of people are comparing this tripod to much more expensive options. Whereas I'm going to compare it more and think about it at, at its price point. Is this good value or do you really need to spend a lot more? So when I went into buying this I didn't realize how expensive tripods were, which sounds a bit silly. But anytime I've bought a tripod before, I've gone to consumer places like Argos or Curry's and just bought whatever one they have. So this one here was about £50 and I thought at the time that was quite expensive. But when I started looking into video tripods, I realised that £50 is not expensive. Looking at most video tripods from professional places, realistically they start about £200 and then when you start getting into the higher end ones that are from brands like Manfrotto and stuff like that, £500 is still relatively entry level. They go up to £1,000, £10,000, it's stupid. And I'm sh and sure, if you're doing it day in, day out and doing huge amounts of video production professionally and you're going to be moving it about every day and putting £10,000 camera rigs on it, then yes, that money might be worth it. But for me, doing YouTube videos at home where the camera stays stationary most of the time, I couldn't really justify that cost. So in doing my research, I came across this from Small Rig. The model number is AD01 and it costs round about £150. I say that because it's the sort of thing that is perpetually on sale or there's those Amazon vouchers you can apply and if you're buying with other small rig products, which I've done here, we'll take a look at this little accessory I bought, you get discounts and stuff. So currently it's listed about £165 but there's a £20 off voucher. So around about £150 I would say, depending on what ha what's happening with offers and stuff like that. It's one of those things that's always got an offer on. So that is a very low price for a fluid head tripod. And while this definitely will not be as good as a £500, £1,000 Manfrotto, I'm hoping it'll be good value. And when I'm comparing this, I'm going to be very mindful of the price. Because I've seen a lot of videos out there about this tripod, it generally gets pretty good reviews. But then you do get a lot of people, generally sort of very much video production professionals, complaining about little features it has and then saying, oh, this, see my Manfrotto has this feature, when the Manfrotto costs probably, you know, easily 10 times as much as this. So you do need to be quite, you know, realise that you're not paying that much for this. So yeah, this is the tripod. And on top of that, I've got this little accessory here that we'll take a look at later, but this will be super useful as well, and I'm really pleased I found it. So we'll take a look at this in a minute. This will be a little, not surprise, but we'll take a look at this later. But yeah, this is the tripod. So as I mentioned, Small Rig is a relatively inexpensive brand, and what they mainly specialize in is sort of, is camera cages, fixings for cameras, brackets, that sort of stuff for building camera rigs. And in fact, I've got some of their kit here on this camera rig. I've got a Small Rig monitor bracket, Small Rig SSD bracket, stuff like that. So. They're generally pretty good for that and they're quite well regarded, but they recently seem to have brought out this tripod. So hopefully it'll be good. So as you can see, I've not opened it up yet. What I like to do with my reviews is I like to take a look at it on camera for the first time I've seen it to give my first impressions in case there's immediate shock or surprise or anything. Then I'll go away and use it and come back and give a proper review. So it comes in this nice bag, which is actually really thickly padded, which is good. I thought this would just be a cheap canvas bag, but it is actually padded, which is nice. That's the tripod in there. Take that out. Take a look at that in a minute. And then in the back here, there's a few accessories that I can feel. So in here we've got instruction manual, some sort of little bracket, looks like for 15 mil rods, something like that. A couple of Allen keys to adjust it all. And then, ah, this is the, ah, the arm for the detach on the head, so that's the arm there. So if we get the bag out of the way, we'll take a look at the tripod itself. Get out this bag. Weight-wise, it's not the heaviest thing in the world, but it is. it does feel substantial, which is good. You know, it's, it's not, you know, carbon fibre or anything, which would make it a lot lighter. 
but so it is relatively heavy as far as tripods go, but it also doesn't feel flimsy, which is you know it's good. So get that out there. Let's see what it's like. So that's the tripod. Immediate impressions, weight seems pretty good, feels pretty substantial. The metal here doesn't feel too flimsy, although we'll need to see what it's like at full height with a natural camera on it. It's got these clips. These are plastic, I was wondering on the video I couldn't tell, or photos I couldn't really tell, that's plastic. There is a bit of plastic construction, but plastic isn't bad as long as it's, you know, good quality. On the bottom you've got these feet that are adjustable, that's pretty good. And then up here you've got the head, so the head's obviously protected with this little bag, that's quite nice. Take that off. And there is the head, so that'll be interesting to try out. Obviously I'll need to get this thing properly set up and move the camera because I can't really test the tripod on the table. But you've got that head there, and then presumably around the other side, there'll be somewhere you can put that arm on it. Yep, there you go, so that's that. There's the arm, and that'll screw onto that sort of rosette style fixing there. This fixing for that does also feel to be plastic, but again, you're not really forcing it, you're not putting a lot of weight on it. Um, and this here also, again, is all, I think that's all plastic, potentially, but it does feel very good quality. If it, if it is plastic, it feels as solid as metal. I can't really tell, actually, to be honest. But yeah, so that was my immediate first impressions taking it out of the box. What I'll now do is I'll go away and set it up, try it out, and we'll come back and talk about it. So here we have the tripod all set up. It feels pretty stable. Basically, there's, there isn't much flex in it. I was worried there would be. On the surface, it does feel a little bit wobbly, but it's because it's sitting on carpet with quite thick underlace. So any movement I'm really seeing is really within the carpet. In terms of legs, they are also pretty strong. Now, they do have a little bit of flex there, and I've seen other people commenting on that. Potentially, I suppose if you go for a higher end tripod, it might not, these might be a bit more solid, but it doesn't feel any, you know, really that flimsy or anything. The one thing I have noticed is it does have quite a lot of plastic construction, so these pieces here are plastic, these clips are all plastic, and while I can't really tell about, tell for the head, it's confusing, it's one of those sort of plastics that you can't really tell is definitely plastic, I think it is plastic, especially given the sort of moulding and stuff. You wouldn't put this level of detail into metal, that would cost an absolute fortune. So I think this is plastic, but it's super solid, so I'm not worried about that at all. If I had to make one comment, the silver plastic does feel a little bit cheap, or just look a little bit cheap. It's just painted silver, and you can kind of see on the back there, it's not actually painted on the back. So that does look a little bit cheap and nasty, but personally, I'd rather have spent the money on the actual features and the functionality of it, and not the aesthetics. So, realistically, for the price, I can't really complain. So, yep, you've got these latch on the legs. Again, they are plastic, but they're pretty solid, so you can release the leg there, and the legs slide up and down like that. Again, it's maybe not the smoothest mechanism ever, but it's generally pretty good, so you can release that, drop it down, and of course, you've got one more stage below that, where it will release, if you bring it up, where it will release a single leg instead, so you can have that come out as well, if you need extra height. And in terms of height, obviously, I don't have the specs to hand, but you can read the spec sheet. This goes stupidly tall. My old tripod is the type where it has the three stages of legs, and then you can also adjust, extend the piece out, the a single pole out the top with a crank handle to bring the camera up higher. And I was worried that this didn't have it. However, realistically, this tripod can basically get to the point that the camera's touching the ceiling. So I think I'm okay with the height. It's definitely dead stable. Quite often when I do shots, I shoot over a table, and what I do, which you're probably not meant to do, is I'll actually tilt the tripod forward slightly, extend one of the legs a little bit longer, and have it so it kind of leans against the table for support so I can get a better top-down view. And this is perfectly solid doing that, which is good. Again, you're probably not meant to do that, you're probably meant to get proper equipment to do that, but I bodge things, so that's how I do it. So yeah, perfectly stable. It's also got this sort of spreader bar in the middle here, which is good. This is all aluminium, so this piece is metal. Middle piece of plastic, but this is all metal, and that comes out and gives it a bit more rigidity, which is good. It's a little bit sharp on the bottom, maybe a slight comment there, but again, not really a problem. So next up, you have the head, which is probably the most important part of the tripod. So on the top, you've got the quick release mechanism. So as you can see here, you've got this little knob here. This loosens it off, and when this is loosened off, the head, the plate can slide back and forward slightly. This is really good. It has end stops, so with this unscrewed, it'll stop there, it'll stop there. You can't unscrew this and have your tripod, your camera go flying off the tripod, which is good. Then what you do to release it is there's this little switch here 
you push this forward, that releases the plate and the plate lifts out from the top. So on this tripod, the plate goes in from the top and clips down, which I really like. I definitely prefer that to the ones you'd have to like slide it in and out the front. That just gets a bit fiddlier to line up. Whereas with this, you can just dump the camera straight on top, clip it down, that's it locked in, and it'll slide back and forward. And being able to slide it back and forward is quite good because that lets you kind of adjust the center of gravity. So obviously, ideally try and mount the plate on the camera in a position where it's centered, but this just gives you a little bit of flexibility just to try and get this balance perfectly right, which is really good. And then once it's on there, you can lock it on and that's securely in there. And now with this, you get the plates. And this uses standard Manfrotto style plates. With tripods, you get different styles of mounting plates, um, Arca Swiss, Manfrotto, um, various others, can't really think of them. But this uses the standard Manfrotto plates, which means there's lots of third party options. It means that you can also get other plates, just have spares, so you can put plates on all your cameras and swap them between the tripod, which is good. It's nice it's not proprietary. And interestingly, under here, there's a little switch that switches between standard and for RS2. I realize that's, that's upside down, but standard and RS2. Now, I can't test that, but apparently what this is, is it's compatible with plates used on the DJI Ronin S2 gimbal. So this lets you switch to use those plates instead. I'm just using a man photo plate, so I'm going to leave it on standard. So that's how that works there. And then for the plate, as you can see on the bottom, it's just standard screw thread with an Allen key fitting. So you may look at that and go, well, how do you fit that? You need an Allen key, that's, that's stupid. Well, actually, there's an Allen key magnetically held in the back, which is really quite neat. I think Small Rig do this for a lot of their kit, but yeah, they actually provide the Allen key and it magnetically attaches in the back, which is quite nice. So that's a quick release plate there. But then the next question is, what did I have in that little box earlier? Well, that's this. So this is another quick release plate, again from Small Rig, that I'll be using instead. So you may be wondering, well, the tripod came with a quick release plate, why did I buy another one? Did I just not realise it came with one? No, because this quick release plate has a really cool trick up its sleeve. So if we take a look at that there, you can see what's happening here now. And this is why I immediately jumped at this as soon as I saw it was a thing. It has these little legs that stick out from it that you can fold out. And it does look a bit like a drone. But this is going to be super useful because with my camera set up, it's in no way stable enough to stand on the quick release plate. Even standing on the bottom of the camera itself is enough for it to kind of get a little bit wobbly. As soon as you put it on a quick release plate, you can't really stand up, it falls over. You need to keep it really on its side, which I don't really like doing. Whereas with this, I can attach this to the bottom of the camera, and if I take the camera off the tripod, I can fold the legs out, and that will sit perfectly securely on a table. So this will be really, really good. Now the only downside of this is that whereas this quick release plate has Pop this out here. Try and do it one handed. There you go. While well, this quick release plate here has a little spring loaded peg here, which this is sort of used on camcorders, so a camcorder like mine, you screw one screw thread in, and then this little pin pushes into a hole in the bottom of the camera and stops it rotating. This doesn't have that. A lot of small rig stuff's designed for more mirrorless rigs, so building around mirrorless or DSLR cameras, which don't generally have those peg holes. So on this instead, what you get is a standard quarter inch screw thread and a 3 8 inch screw head, basically the two standards you're going to get on a camera tripod. And what you do is you just screw one of those into the camera, into the camera. And if you want to remove one, which you generally would do if you're not using one, there's this little rubber plug. You pop that out like that. You can then slide the screw you don't need out. So I'm not going to need the 3 8 inch, so that can come out. And then you can put the plug back in. So because this doesn't have that push peg, it just means that I have to mount my camera purely with the quarter inch thread. Now that's perfectly secure, there's no chance of it falling off or anything. It just means that the camera could potentially rotate if I applied enough force to overcome the friction applied by the rubber pads. It's absolutely fine though, it's not really a problem. And long term, I suspect eventually once I come to upgrading my camera, my next move will probably be back to a mirrorless rig, but with a proper frame and rig around it. And if you're doing that, generally speaking, the way they tend to work is you'd actually have two different screws going through the bottom of the um, quick release plate to screw onto some, some sort of cage around the camera, which would be perfectly secure. So yeah, just a little sort of thing to note there. If you're using a camera that wants a push pin, you won't have that. You can still mount it, it just might rotate a little bit if you're not careful. But yeah, that's it there. And as you'd expect, because it's all standardized, this will just clip into the tripod like that, screw in there, and fix exactly the same way as the standard included one. It just has that additional benefit of having those fold out legs, which I really, really like. This wasn't super cheap, it was about £50 or something, but it's well worth it. 
And what I would mention is if you're buying this tripod and you want to buy something like this as well, consider buying them at the same time. Because at the point that I bought this, Amazon had some sort of discount where it was a case if you bought, I think if you bought the tripod, you got 15% off the plate or vice versa or something like that. It gave me quite big savings buying the two together rather than buying them separately. So definitely worth considering if you're doing that. So yep, that's how the quick release plate works. Definitely seems like a pretty nice mechanism. And it is nice that it takes standardised plates. Next up, what about the fluid head? So as I mentioned, this has a fluid head, which is basically what you're going to get for video tripods. Essentially what it means is that in the pan and tilt axis, there's fluid and there's some sort of, it's basically oil. You can actually hear it as you're kind of pushing it. Maybe not right now, but you can kind of hear the liquid bubbling around a little bit occasionally. But essentially what it means is you get a little bit of resistance when you're panning and tilting. So likewise with this here, you just feel a little bit of resistance. This is compared to a normal tripod, like my, the one I'm using the camera on now, which is just a friction head, where basically as you're pushing, the only resistance you're getting is just plastic graining against plastic. With this, you actually get that benefit of the fluid, which just means you're going to get much smoother panning and tilting. There is, however, a couple of things to point, point out with this, that while it is a fluid head, as far as I can tell, it's not got all the features of a £500 Manfrotto fluid head. So the main one is you don't really get adjustable tension. So you get the drag imparted by the fluid head, absolutely, you can totally feel that there. But these knobs here are really just to lock it off, so you can lock it in a position. On higher end fluid heads, you'll have separate adjustments from the locks that will allow you to sort of set it so you can set how much resistance you want and you can use that to adjust the speed of your panning much easier. With this, you don't really get that. You've either unlocked it, you've locked it, or if you set it kind of part way, you may feel it's a bit stiffer, but realistically what you're doing is you're kind of just grinding against the friction imparted by the locking mechanism. So it will help a little bit, but it won't be as smooth as having it on the fluid head. It's absolutely fine. Essentially what you need to do is just unlock it, and when you're panning, just be very steady with your hand, and use your hand to, impart, to adjust the speed, not the drag adjustment, because you don't have that. But realistically, as long as you can deal with that, it's absolutely fine. So what I would say with this is, if you're buying a tripod purely for heavy use of panning and tilting, where that's absolutely critical, you probably want to get a better head, because you're going to want something that's going to have adjustable drag on the pan and tilt axis. But for someone like me, where the camera is used mostly static, it may occasionally need to be used if I'm wanting to pan and do a bit of an artistic shot, where it's a relatively rare thing I can do, it's not really a problem. Especially because the sort of stuff I do, it, a lot of it can be done with multiple takes, so I can easily try it again if I mess up the panning. Whereas if you're wanting to film live events where you need to critically pan, con pan and tilt constantly and do it really accurately, it's all live, you can't retake things, you probably want to go for a higher end head that has drag adjustment. But other than that, it's kind of fine. The next thing this has is what's called a bowl base. So the tripod itself essentially has a bowl type, type of shape that sits under here and the tripod head has a, a half ball, semicircle, don't know what shapes are hard, but a sort of half of a, half a ball on the bottom of it that sits in that bowl. And what this means is there's this adjustment on the bottom, you can unlock, just about unscrewing it there, and the head can then rotate around inside that bowl. And then once you've done that, you can lock it off. And if you look around the back here, you'll see there's a little spirit level to let you sort of adjust the, or check what's level. And this is really nice to have, because if you're working on uneven ground, of course what you can normally do is just adjust your legs to kind of get it roughly even. And with my current tripod, that's all I've done. I've just kept adjusting the legs until it's been right. But the problem with that is it's a bit fiddly to adjust the leg, lock it off, look, check its level. Whereas what's great with this is you can adjust your legs, get it roughly level, unlock this, and then move this around until the bubble level shows it's perfectly level, and you can lock it off again. So it just gives you that a bit, little bit of additional adjustment to get it more precise, which is really good. But this is where another huge thing that I've noticed comes in. is because it has this bowl base, which is a standardised mounting, you can easily remove the head and replace it. So all you need to do is, if you unscrew this piece on the bottom here, it takes a little bit of, quite a long thread on it, but if you unscrew that, this comes off, which is like a locking plate, and the head lifts out. And that's where you can see the bowl under there. And that's the bowl 
or the ball on the base of the tripod head. But this is where you can replace the head. And this is where this could make a lot of sense for people, is that the head is very easily replaceable. So what you could do is if you're, say, starting out with video production and you need a tripod for now, and in the future you might want to upgrade it, well, what you can do with this is you could start off by buying this entire package with the tripod and the fluid head for £150 or so, and use that for as long as you need to. And then say you've got an event coming up where you need to do a lot of panning or you've got a bit of budget and you want to upgrade the head for something that's a bit more feature-packed, well, what you could easily do is go out and spend £500 on a top-end Manfrotto head, install it on this tripod and use it on this existing tripod base. Because realistically, this tripod base is actually absolutely fine. And by doing that, it means you can kind of spread the cost out. You can buy this tripod for now, use that for a while, upgrade the head at a later date when you've got the money, use that for a while, and then eventually you might decide, actually, yeah, you want a better quality base as well. Well, you can take your good head off this, buy a good tripod, and put the two together and have an even better tripod. And then after you've done that, you could put the original head back on this tripod and have a secondary tripod. So you've got that bit of an upgrade path. So it makes an absolute fantastic starter tripod where you could buy this as a package and upgrade it as you go. The only thing I would mention is with this ball head, you need to make sure you lock it off very tightly because it's quite easy to not lock that off tightly enough and then as you're panning or tilting, suddenly the ball moves and the whole thing shifts. So you just need to make sure you definitely lock that off really tightly there. The other thing that's really good with this is what Small Rig do with a lot of their kit is they put quarter inch screw threads everywhere. So you can see there's one here, there's one on each leg essentially on one side, and also on the head, if you rotate it round, on the right hand side, there's also a quarter inch screw thread. So this is really useful because it means you can mount all sorts of hardware to it. So for example, you can get, say, a ball mount like this. These are these cost very little. You could then say screw that onto there like that. That would then give you a fixing point, you could then angle up and attach something onto that. You could attach monitors, batteries microphone clamps, anything you really want. Likewise, you could attach these onto the leg, so you could say take that there, decide, right, you want a ball joint on the leg, screw that in there like that, and then say you could take a clamp, you could put a quarter inch thread adapter into the back of that, you could either screw that onto the side here, and then clamp things onto your tripod from the side, or you could attach that onto, say, some sort of ball joint and have that hanging off the tripod there, it's just a really nice thing to have because it's one of those things that costs very little to add those screw threads in but it could absolutely save you in a pinch if you needed to mount something to the tripod and it means that if you're using things like external monitors external audio hardware things like that being able to mount it onto the tripod or onto the head could be quite good from a balance perspective or not having to cart all that weight around on the on the head itself if you could mount it onto the tripod the tripod itself so that's really good the only thing that's a little bit tricky is just with the moulding in the shape of this plastic here is you've got this kind of shape here and if you mean if you cut with some things like if you're screwing one of these quarter inch couplers in you get to a point where the, the outer piece here hits the plastic before the screw's already in so that's a little bit annoying but it's nothing you can so can't solve with a longer screw and some sort of washer so yeah those additional mounting points are really nice to have. Finally, looking at the top of the head here, you can see you have this arm. Obviously, this is the arm you'll use for panning and tilting, but it is also adjustable. So on the right-hand side here, you've got this little knob. You can undo that, and it's one of those rosette-style fixings. So what you can do is you can move it around like this, move it to any position you want, tighten it up, and it locks in. And because it actually uses teeth on the underside there, once it's tightened, it's not going to slip. So yep, you can kind of use that to kind of rotate it all the way around there. You can also, with it loosened off, rotate the handle around like that because it's just a sort of rod inside the clamp there. So you can use that additionally if you want to sort of, say, have the angle on the arm different. So it's pretty flexible there, which is good. It also means if you want to store the tripod, because it's a fluid head, it's not like a traditional friction tripod like my current one, where all I do is just unlock the tilt, tilt the head down like that to get the arm out of the way and store it in a bag like that. With this head, because it always wants to spring back to the central position, you wouldn't want to do that. But what you would do instead is you'd lock the tilt off in the sort of standard position where it would want to naturally sit, and then store it away. All you would do is undo that there, move the arm down so the arm is in line with the legs, and then lock it off again. And of course, you can easily take the, leg, take the arm off and store it separately in the bag as well, which is how it came. 
So yep, that's how the arm adjustment works there. Okay, so now I'll quickly test it with my actual camera on it. So obviously the video and audio quality is probably not quite as good right now because I've had to swap over to my old camera and audio recorder. But I've got the camera set up here and all you need to do is drop it on and lock it in at the side there. So it's dead easy to put it on and to take it off, just obviously unscrew that, push this clip forward and it'll come off. And as I mentioned before, once it's on there and this isn't screwed in, you can slide it forward or slide it back within a sort of range there where it won't fall off. It's a bit scary doing that, but it won't fall off. But you can use that to kind of balance it, which is good. So obviously as my camera setup, you've got the camcorder with the Blackmagic recorder on top, SSD mounted on here. And then this clamp here normally holds my microphone. So my microphone's got a big, massive XLR connector. So normally that sits in the clamp here and connects over this XLR to mini XLR cable into the recorder. But obviously I'm using the microphone right now. So yep, that's the setup there. So let's take a look at it. Now, obviously on there, it feels perfectly secure, perfectly solid. Even at top height, there's no problem at all. If we unlock it, you can see you can easily tilt it down. You can tilt it literally all the way if I want. No fear with that at all. Likewise, I can tilt it back all the way. Again, absolutely no fear having it like that. I feel perfectly confident in, confident in the strength of this. Additionally, when it's at this midpoint, this is where you can adjust the balance. So I've basically centered this plate on the tripod, so it's on the camera, so it's pretty stable, but you can see it does naturally want to tilt forward. But all you need to do is loosen this off here, nudge the camera back a bit, and yeah, that seems fairly stable there. So you can use that to adjust the center of gravity, which is good. Now this is where the one feature that this doesn't have that some, well, a lot of higher end fluid heads do have is, an, is a counterbalance or a counterweight, can't remember what term to use. But essentially with a counterbalance, it means, well, without one, you can see as you, if you tilt the camera forward and then let go, it will naturally try and fall forward. Likewise, if you tilt it back and let go, it will naturally try and fall back. Now, because it's a fluid head, it does mean that that is quite a smooth fall, which is quite nice. It means if you do a slip and let go of it, it's not going to come crashing further forward, fall forward with a thud, monitor falls off the top, bad things happen. It is more of a slow fall. But some higher end fluid heads let you set a counterbalance, which means that in any position, it'll kind of just stay in that position with the lock off. So you tilt it back to here, let go, and it would just stay there. Or you tilt it forward to there, let go, and it would just stay in that position. That also has the benefit that you could kind of then grab the handle at any position and adjust the position it's in without having to turn the lock off. Because this tripod doesn't have that, it means that if you're tilting it like that, you then need to lock it in that position. And really where the main downside of this would be is if you have something locked off like this and then you want to pan, you need to be extremely careful. If you're, say, doing this while recording, you need to be extremely careful to release the lock without causing a, ju a judder when the force holding the camera in position switches from the lock to your hand. Because unless you're applying the exact correct amount of force onto the handle, you're on the risk of taking the lock off and the camera then jumping in one of the two directions. So yeah, that's just another feature this doesn't have that's just worth bearing in mind. There's no problem with this not having a feature. That's, you know, products are, are allowed to exist without having all the features that other products do have. But it's just worth bearing in mind that some higher end fluid heads do have a counterbalance feature, whereas this one doesn't. But yeah, just worth bearing that in mind. But yeah, as you can see here, it is with the proper big setup on it and it works absolutely brilliantly. Perfectly stable. I have absolutely no fear of having it even at quite extreme angles like that. So yeah, definitely very happy with it. So there you go. That's a small rig AD01 fluid head video tripod. And what do I think of it? Well, for the price, it's absolutely excellent. You definitely can't compare this to some £500, £1,000 plus tripod. It is a budget option. But for the price of £150, the build quality is absolutely fine. I have no problem putting an extremely heavy, expensive camera on top of this. The fluid head, while it's not super adjustable, is definitely a big, big upgrade over a standard friction head tripod and will allow decent sort of smooth panning, even though it would be nice if you could adjust it, but perfectly fine. The quick release plate mechanism feels really reliable. You're not gonna have your camera fall off that due to it sliding off or due to the mechanism breaking. It's dead easy to take the camera off. The fact that it's standardized means you can easily get replacement heads like I've done with that one that has the legs on it. And given the fact that it's got the bowl head, it means that you've got a good upgrade path if in the future you did want to upgrade it. You can easily get a new head, put it on its existing base, use your new head for a while, 
and then after a while when you've got more money, replace the legs as well. So the main thing is who's this for? If you've got a huge budget and you're working with top end kit and you're doing professional shoots, it's your, you know, it's your day job, yeah, get something a bit more expensive. But if you're a hobbyist like me or you're just getting started, this is an absolutely great option and it's a massive upgrade over a lot of cheap tripods. Plus having that upgrade path means that if you're getting started, you can very easily move on from this and upgrade in the future without having to spend a huge amount all at once. So yeah, I'm extremely happy with this tripod. Massive upgrade over my old one. In fact, obviously because I'm shooting this, I've had to keep using my old tripod to film this. And every time I go from using this back to that old tripod, it's terrifying because I'm just looking at that camera thinking it's going to fall off, it's going to fall off. So this is a definite big upgrade over that old tripod. And for 150, 150 odd pounds, 160 pounds depending on the price and what sales are on, you can't really go wrong to be honest. So yeah, there you go. Thank you very much for watching. And if you're interested in buying this, there's links in the description.